are Confessional Magazine, and this is more to the story. Brought to you today by Iris and Bo, whose toner helps keep my laugh lines in check, because you never know what our guests are going to say. Visit irisandbo.com today and use code CONFESSIONAL for 20% off. So much love in this heart of mine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Confessional Magazine, and I am here today with the very talented Robert Chestnut. Thank you so much for being here today, Robert. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. My pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, so I know that you have been in this acting world for quite some time now, (laughs) starting out, I think, maybe with Days of Our Lives, right? Yes. Yeah, my first first gig. Well, second gig. Yeah, my first did. uh, I got into, into the union. And um, first thing they did is ran me out to Days of Our Lives. And that was really when, after that, I was actually offered a regular uh, series. Um, It wasn't Days of Our Lives. It was another one. But at that time, you just didn't do soap operas. It's because it's like the death of your career. And um, and you didn't do commercials. You didn't do TV. You were just going to be a film actor. But that changed so much. And so you look back and he goes, gosh, boy, I've made some mistakes along the way. (laughs) (laughs) But that's part of the journey, right? (laughs) I suppose. uh, Yeah, right. Yeah. It gives me a lot to work with now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what are some of your current projects that you've done? I go ahead. (laughs) No, no. I just actually yesterday just finished on a little uh, short uh, and it is called Lamplight. And it's a little period piece. I actually read for the lead and it was a real heavy heavy like some meaty meaty stuff I mean mine's kind of out there and off so it was always one of those roles I really wanted um so you can you know throw it out to the film festival world and try to rack up a bunch of you know awards and you know (laughs) praised but um but just touching people with that and that's that's really important to me if I can make you feel what I was feeling that um I don't know if it sounds corny, but it's real, you know, it's real satisfying. It really is because I think you, you know, that you did your job as an actor. Mm -hmm. So, but they went in a complete different direction and they went with like 20 something and it's like, okay, that's good. But then they offered me a role in it. So um, I am actually the locksmith, which we open up the scene and and I'm kind of getting into the house and got a crush on a sister and so yeah, it was actually it's a little different something, and and that was oh that was fun that was cool. So I just wrapped that yesterday, and we'll see when that comes out and how it turns out. Yeah, you'll have to keep me in the loop with that. I mean, it's probably got to feel after so much time, you know, the past year and a half of, you know, the chaos the world has been in. Yes. What was that like as? You know, and after that, you know, you're used to getting out there and performing. What has that, like, been like, that gap of time? Well, I'll tell you, 2020, and, and things are different for me. I mean, I actually took a long hiatus. I took about a 20-year break from my acting career. And I had a young family. I had a sideline business. I went to flea markets and then uh, trade, not trade shows, um, little street fairs and things like that right? Art and wine festivals. And I had this cool little clothing brand. And then I found myself going to an auto race. And everything's weekends for me because I have to keep my week open for my acting, for my auditions. And I went to this auto race. We were in a recession. I couldn't believe all the money people were spending. And thus from that, I created this wonderful, wonderful brand because there wasn't anything for women in motorsports. And it got so big, it started taking me away. And so then all of a sudden I find my agents at the California Speedway. And I don't know if you know much about auto racing and the d- names of Dale Earnhardt, Dale yeah. Earnhardt Sr. Well, you should, you're in Ohio. You yeah. <laughs> uh, and Jeff Gordon. And then my brand, and it's called Race Girl. Uh, was and so but we were the biggest hottest things in motorsports and there's my agents outside my trailer hands on their hips saying bobby chestnut you got to make a decision it's either this or you're acting and i had like 300 people out front my booth i've got six girls taking hand over fist money and i'm thinking you know what this can be bigger than an acting career And, and you know i always have my acting so it took me away for a little while and 
but getting back into it uh, in San Francisco instead of Los Angeles, it's it was a real tough venture getting back into the industry up here because there's not a whole lot of big projects going on. Mm -hmm. So things started working for me. And, and then you can't get an agent and you can't get into the casting directors because it's this small incestual kind of, I mean, take LA and then shrink it, you know, right. and everyone's friends. And it's like, they're not gonna let any outsiders in. It's like, oh, great. So, but I, I managed to break in and started working quite a bit. And 2020 was rocking. It was just off the charts in the beginning. I mean, coming off of night, you know, 2019, then 2020, it's like, wow, I've got my insurance, my health pension again. I'm going to have it no time for 2020. And then boom, man, COVID just killed it all. And it, it's, been a, it's been a struggle there. You know, it has, but uh, it's picking up now. You know, things are starting to happen again. Mm -hmm. So I've had a fairly busy year. You know, I can't complain, but, you know, but here we are. I, I First of all, I want to go back to your race girl. Is that what it was called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, I had no idea about that part of, you know, you, I see you as an actor, but that is so cool to know that you did that. And like supporting women is always important. Yep. And mm -hmm. especially in an industry like that, where it's not, you know, what is Danica Patrick was probably the first. She was, you know, right? and I have a nice story about Danica Patrick, but you know, maybe we'll save that for another day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can share if you want to. <laughs> we will. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll we'll do that again sometime. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, no, so yeah, it's just it's really impressive and just cool that you were able to, you know, find success not only in acting, but then you ran this wildly successful business. But yeah. your heart, you still had this calling to come back oh my god i mean it was it was well you know what because i grew up in the clothing business so my two big dreams being an actor and i grew up in a small little town in, in the santa cruz mountains we were born in la but we moved to the santa cruz mountains in, in the redwood forest and so you know the shit kickers and, and that's you know that's what we had up there they were the valley boys the rednecks and it's like and I just like, well, I really don't fit here. And I wanted to do theater, but it's like, well, I can't do that. They're all going to give me a bad time. You know, they give me a hard enough time anyhow. So when I was a junior in high school, uh, my dad says, hey, what do you want to do? You know, because like your brothers are in construction and, you know, we have the clothing business, but what do you really want to do? So, well, I, I want to be an actor. And I, it just blew my parents' mind. They had no idea. So they were very supportive. And they wanted to make sure that I got the best training. So we went down to Southern California. We found the Lee Strasberg Institute. And that's where I started training. And so it really was really reaching your core and really giving you truth through your art. And, you know, sometimes it really sucks because it hurts. You know, like I did the karma. The karma yeah. was just so tough to do. It was, um, it was, it was a wrenching, you know, you're going so deep and just those, just such heart wrenching places in your life that you have to take yourself. And then they were all night shoots. You know, I didn't sleep for three nights and it was, it was, um, it was something else. Yeah. But then that, afterwards. Yeah. yeah. That movie karma is incredible. I mean, I, I watched it myself. And then immediately afterwards, I walked out into the living room and I said to my husband, I said, you like, you're stopping your video games and you're watching this movie <laughs> with me. It's, in, it's powerful. It is. And you're incredible in it. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I want people to watch the movie, but it's a story that more of us can relate two then we probably are comfortable admitting if that's see, it's it's about a time of desperation in a man's life trying to save his wife who is battling terminal cancer and it just goes from there and it's it's heavy and i have so much respect for you for being able to play a heavy role like that what do you do to like get into that character uh, you just, you just 
reach deep down in self, into yourself and, you know, your bag of tricks is what they say. But, but the bag of tricks are really is, you know, real life. And, and if that's not there is the what ifs. So you really have to go deep. Uh, I, I was trained to be able to, to go there, you know, so, um, but it's, you know, so you're not there goofing around. Sometimes you're on set and people want to talk to you and just, you know, be goofballs, but it's like, you know, and you're doing your work and they realize that and they give you your space. But that was really reaching down pretty deep. And, um, yeah, you know, some, I, I've had some things in life that, um, I've lived life. I've lived life. So, yeah. um, yeah. Um, so where has, where has karma gone in like within the film world? I well, know it's what it is, it, it, it went to the film festival world and that's what a lot of these short films will wind up doing. And it is well accepted there, you know, and you know, it's won lots of praise and reviews and, you know, I thank goodness for that. And I thank for the opportunity to do it. And it was this great young uh, North, uh, South Korean um, director, um, and Sunny Na, and she's actually back in Korea right now. So, yeah, that's one of those things with this project. I don't know, maybe, I, well, because you saw it, and I just thought, hey, there's a nice little spinoff on this thing, is what happens afterwards. You know, maybe you know, it would be great to turn it into a little... You know, serious Show. episodic yeah, yeah. I, it certainly could um and that's something but i'll have to i'll have to figure out maybe where i can take that with the wheel know. spinning with that but i can yeah. wheel spinning with that of course right. i would say oh yeah that's right yeah. Yeah, you're right yeah. you'll get it you'll get it you'll get it after you see the movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, so rob what what would you say your favorite kind of role to play is like what was your like your favorite kind of character to get into? Well, and and that's my thing. I've always in the very I've always I, I've always managed to get that troubled guy that's uh, hurting a little bit. You know, there's something deep emotionally in with him, and it's like, well, wait a minute, you gotta stop doing that stuff <laughs> because there's a different part of me. You know, it's like, what about that funny, witty, charming guy? Yeah. And um, but I, I I always get the the deep kind of um, or endearing or you know troubled hurting guy i could yeah. see you being like the meat cute guy though too like you run into yeah. somebody accidentally at the gas station and then you take her on a date like we need to see that kind of robber well, right? okay well, i think that's <laughs> happened before <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us about like what what's your family like we don't have to get too deep into it if you don't want to but What's your family like? Like, tell us about yourself, Robert. Like, well, I um, I was well, I was born in Southern California. My uh, young parents. By the time my mother was twenty four, she had four little boys. Wow. And you know, we just lived the all American life down there. We were close to LAX Airport. In fact, the home that we were at, the airport bought all my class. I think I was in third grade, second grade. I guess. Just maybe if it's going for a second grade. But all my friends, the airport bought their homes. <laughs> and, right. And so they wiped out all my friends. <laughs> That's <awful. laughs> I was like, well, that kind of sucked. Um, <laughs> but it, it was, but I have four brothers, right? So we had each other. And, but then we moved to um, Northern California. My father was going to UCLA and uh, with four little boys, he went actually back to school. He was uh, one of these guys who was working for Hughes Market and, and, and the union bosses wanted to take him under his wing and kind of prep him to be their you know, future guy mm -hmm. and sent him back to school. So he went back to UCLA. I mean, even as a kid, he was a little troublemaker. It was funny. My parents met in Venice High School um, in the dean's office. Okay. My dad was in trouble again. And my mother was sweet. She, she was late for class. So sitting in the dean's office, he's looking at her and says, I'm going to marry you. And she's like, oh, yeah, right. And then he did. So uh, it was really sweet. And I know, love gosh, that. Yeah, they're still married. They've been married for, gosh, 60 years, 60, not quite six years. Yeah, six years, I think. Yeah, it's crazy. 
But so we moved up to the Santa Cruz Mountains from being little city boys and well, kind of beachy because we're close to the beach. And we just grew up in the Redwood Forest and just had a little Tom Sawyer life. And, you know, all my brothers stayed with the family business. I, it didn't work for me, you know, and I just needed something more. And, and I went down to LA to pursue my acting career. And I did, did very well, really well. Um, I've been in about a hundred national commercials. So I was one of those guys that, you know, I'm like, in, well, back then it was probably 90% of America's subconscious mind, but now I don't know. I'm still in a lot of back of people's heads. And, but I worked so much, you know, and, and then leaving the business and coming back, I didn't know how good I had it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really, you know, took it for granted, but you're out there doing it. My mm -hmm. whole thing was, Hey, I'm going to do this from my talent alone. So I never did the Hollywood scene thing. I didn't like the people and there's mm -hmm. nice people in Hollywood, but it wasn't, I just wasn't into that. And I wanted to actually prove to my father that I'm going to do this with my my acting my skills alone but it's yeah. really tough that one's tough um but I guess I got to be proud of myself I used to get called in from ABC for all the movies of the weeks I didn't have to audition for them they would just call me in and I'd always be on the bottom of the list there's six guys there and you you know you know the names above you from their prior work but I was always there I never got it and I finally figured out oh you dummy you know as you as you grow a little older and a little wiser is why are you being so proud? A part of the business is marketing yourself, you know? So you have to do some things you don't like, you know, you be at places, you know, mm -hmm. be a part of the scene. You don't have to get too involved in it, but it's, you know, that's just the way that is with, with most businesses. So, yeah. Um, so here I am step two, my, my kids are grown. And when my son uh, left the house, he's dead. He goes, you know, you, you got to go back to acting because, oh, here we are. You got to go back because that's where your heart is. Mm -hmm. And um, so here I am. Yeah. Good for you for coming mm -hmm. back to it because at the end of the day, if you're not fulfilled, that like, then you're not happy. And yeah. what's the point? And you're talented enough that you, oh, now I'm the one getting a call. Nope, now you're gone. Nope. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, okay <laughs> um at the end of the day like if you're not fulfilling your own like desire and craft and stuff then the audience isn't getting what they need either and especially after the last year and a half we need <laughs> the entertainment worlds to just bring us joy and all of this um so what kind of like future goals do you have for you know, not even just the acting world, but like beyond that, do you, do you see yourself writing the script for it? Well, yeah, and actually I, I, over the years, I, mean, I have a few stories. You know, I actually have a, a few really good projects. And those are the things that you just kind of put in the back of your head and you said, oh, I'm gonna do these someday. And this, you know, and time goes by. But if you really think about it as, as an actor, you, in a sense, any, a lot of actors, if you watch and you look at the credits, you'll see an executive producer is the same guy that's starring in the movie. Mm -hmm. And this really is a, a lot of, you know, how this happens. And some people are a little naive to it, um, even going back as far as Warren Beatty or Kevin Costner. I mean, those guys, no one wanted to hire them. You know, so they and, did it themselves. They did it themselves. Big stars. I mean, you know, there's some big stars out there and they you, you think, well, they might have the charm and that's what it is. It's like, a, they're entertaining, right? But then as an actor, you go, oh my God, come on. You know, you just change your accent three times. And it's like, you know, it's like, what? Come on, let me feel you, right? Because you want to feel the characters, you want to care yeah. for them. And so that's what I strongly believe in is you have to, you got to feel for the characters. Otherwise, mm -hmm. what are you watching? But um, it, it's something, yeah, I've got projects. And now I'm, I'm starting to do it. I'm actually going to be working on my first project here with someone I know um, close to, which is is someone up here in Northern California has done production and casting. And so we're going to do, um, we're going to jump on her rodeo film and just make it happen. 
And so, so COVID actually put off my first movie, which was something that I, that I came up with when I was um, sitting on set as a background actor in one of the big blockbusters up in San Francisco. And, 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 and that's another story because I never did background work before. For me, it was always, you know, the principal work. And, and when I was in the union, it was really tough to get in the union. And, and then there was, that was Screen Actors Guild. Then there was Screen Extras Guild, you know, which is a great thing for people and have a lot of fun. And, you know, some people can make a, a, a bit of a living at it, you know, in LA, and then they can get their insurance and do all that. And yeah, that's fine. But, you know, that's not why I'm in the business. I want to be able to touch you right? Mm -hmm. I want you to feel my pain. Mm -hmm. And so coming up here, it was really tough because it's like, I couldn't get an agent. And I'm thinking, how can I not get an agent with everything I've done before? And it was, it's just different up North. It's, just, it's small time. You got these agents that have had, that were actors mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago. And, and now they're agents. They became an agent and all their buddies from 20, 30 years ago, um, and they're all, you know, they're modeling agents slash acting agents. So it's like they say, sorry, well, if you're willing to do some non-union work, we'll take you on. And it's like, well, I can't do that. I say, well, that's the way it's going to work here. I'd rather give it to my buddy, the, the treat as a union job. Yeah. And then so I just, you know, I just couldn't get in. And it's like, man. So I wound up and started, I guess I got to start from the bottom i gotta go and do some background work and it was tough to do i mean it, it kind of was i mean but who am i to say background work is but i mean it, it was just tough to do going to do background well, from everything going from because it was you had, yeah. you had been given the bigger yeah. roles before so it's got to yeah. be I did some nice big things your pride yeah. almost you know yeah it's... it was i get you know i got a little fried you know, so I ate Human. Coke, but exactly, <laughs> but you know, it, it's just like, but you know, and sometimes it's okay. It's a long day doing that. It's a long day just being a principal actor on there. But, um, but you know, it's like, oh man, I should be, a, you know, I should be with those speaking lines right there. But, mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, so we were in this in San Francisco and they rented this old apartment complex and they put us in this little dingy kind of like dungeness basement and <laughs> and it was so just man it, it was conditions were so horrible and then my mind started going and I'm watching these two girls talking and she's talking about herself and yeah you, yeah you know, background actors there's a lot of characters and then all of a sudden this the, everything came to me and going oh I got another one and this one it'll be a lot of fun and and so I'm gonna keep it low budget and it'll be kind of a thriller slasher kind of a thing and and, but that's what you have to do is get on the map anyhow. And yeah. so, yeah, so I'm real excited, but, but I, it was supposed to be done and then COVID hit. And the only thing that COVID, gosh, you have COVID coordinators, you got all the COVID tests and you just put so much budget on a film you couldn't imagine. Um, so if you want to do this little low budget thing, it's really not that anymore. So, right. but we'll get through it all. Yeah. But I guess just you just yeah. stick with it. You know, it's just yeah. a bump in the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I keep saying stuff like this, and it's not intentional, I promise. <laughs> uh, so, Robert, I how can people find you? Um, check out your, I know you're on IMDb. IMDb like, would be good, yeah. You can actually get a, get a you know, little taste of the clip, um, my, my actor's reel, which um, I need to do a little updating. Got a few things to add to it, which is great. And, and, and that's it there. I sent you a link to, to Karma. Yes. Um, you feel free to share that. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, just contact your, you know, the major LA casting directors and, and agents say, hey, how come you're not using Robert Chestnut? Right. Watch this film. <laughs> like, you yeah. seriously. I, I, yes. You are so very talented and I'm so grateful that you know you sat down and chat with me for a little bit today and we got to know a little bit more about you and your story and your journey and I can't wait to see where else you're going to go because we're going to be seeing more of you I just know it yeah well I'm back you know yeah so I'm here I'm here to stay now yeah well we're happy about that 
So well, thank, thank you, you so much. again. Thank My you pleasure. again. And All I right. will talk to you soon. All right. Take Bye. care. Thank you. Bye-bye.